Politics 101. I'm Naomi Binkley with Fireside Production. We're here at the University of Denver for your quick fire round. We're getting answers to your top five questions about the race to the White House. What's the difference between a primary and a caucus? Well, a primary is just a regular election. It's a secret ballot. Um, you go into a polling place, you cast a vote, and then you leave. It's very simple. Um, a caucus is somewhat different in that it's actually designed to be an open process. That is, people, you go there with your neighbors to some sort of a meeting place, um, and everyone publicly declares which candidate they're with. And there's actually some deal of horse trading that can occur at a caucus. You can try and convince your neighbors uh, to vote your way, or they can try and convince you to vote theirs. Why do you have to be a registered Republican or Democrat to take part? Colorado, under its state laws, you, it has a closed caucus system, also has a closed primary system. Uh, that simply means that caucuses and primaries are only open to members of that particular party, and they have to be registered with that party for more than a month in advance. The logic behind that is simply that uh, a party is choosing its nominee. Um, it's really only for members of that party to get to be part of that process. What is a superdelegate? Uh, superdelegate is uh, something that exists mainly on the Democratic side. Um, in awarding, uh, each state has a certain number of delegates that are at stake. Um, in, uh, in all the Democratic caucuses and convention or caucuses and primaries around the country. Um, but every uh, Democratic member of Congress plus members of the Democratic National Committee uh, also have status as superdelegates. That is, they also have their own vote that they can cast for a nominee and, at the convention. For example, uh, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama are more or less tied as to the number of delegates they've won so far in the caucuses and primaries. But most of the superdelegates on the Democratic side are already supporting Hillary Clinton. How do the vote and delegates factor in to decide the winner in each state? The percentage of the vote that you get in the state does not necessarily reflect uh, the number of delegates you'll get in that state. Um, for example, in, in Nevada just last week, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, uh, beating Barack Obama slightly. Barack Obama looks like he'll receive uh, more delegates than she did out of that state. And it all depends how states, and this varies a lot by state, how they actually award their delegates. How will all of this determine who becomes the nominee at the Democratic National Convention? Most years, and certainly in the last 40 years, um, the winner has been decided long before the conventions. They simply win enough of these early primaries and caucuses that it's no longer in doubt. They rake up enough of the delegates that they have a majority going into the convention. That might not necessarily be the case this year. I mean, it probably will. But there is a chance that um, no candidate will have achieved a majority of delegates. Um, particularly on the Democratic side, if you have um, Clinton and Obama s roughly splitting the number of delegates, um, if Edwards is able to claim just enough delegates to keep the other two from claiming a majority, uh, suddenly you have a brokered convention. It's a big week for the campaigns here in Colorado. President Bill Clinton will stump for his wife, and Senator Barack Obama is scheduled to rally here at DU on Wednesday. Catch it all in your next Fireside Feature.